Paul, uh, he, he doesn't, he's not necessarily mischievous, is he, Jürgen Klopp? But you could take what he said there as he's developing a player a little bit better than perhaps what was happening at mm. Arsenal. Or you could also say, well, if you're up against Meza Ozil and Alexis Sanchez as the man that's to provide and score goals, then it's, it's a big ask anyway, isn't it, at a club like Arsenal? Yeah, it is. I mean, when you're at Arsenal, you know, when you're playing with them two players who are world-class footballers, mm. the natural reaction to, for players is... As soon as they get the ball, we're them two. Mm -hmm. And they give them the ball. And they'll probably touch it 40 times more than Oxlade-Chamberlain. So, straight away, that knocks his odds down of having mm. a good game compared to them. And I just think he's playing at the moment. Is you know, it I something just, as simple as that? I he's think, getting the games under his I belt, he's, he's getting games. into a rhythm. I mean, when I look at Oxlade-Chamberlain, I've followed his career, you know, from Southampton to Arsenal. I still don't know where he plays. Mm. I don't know his best position. I think now you've got to put him in the centre or in the midfield in that three and say, right, you're playing there. Mm. Yeah. And leave him there Think. for ten games. You know, he's been one game there and then he plays wing back and then he plays on the wing. And it, he just that needs was a part position. Of the reason why he wanted to leave. Yeah, and he wanted because to he leave. was, he was playing wing back Arsenal play with a three four three. Mm. And and He's, a, he's an attacking player. What uh, Klopp just mentioned, he wants to get into goal-scoring mm. situations. I don't know how many goals a season you can get from wing-back, and I play there, and I wouldn't get any. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's a so he, you can see why he wanted to move fit, Arsenal but, yeah. for Liverpool, yeah. because <laughs> the way he plays, he's dynamic, he's, he's a fantastic athlete, as well as technically he's mm. a fantastic player. And I think he fits into, into Liverpool's system a lot better than he would playing wing-back for Arsenal. And I think uh, for a player to be in an... Env the environment helps a player bring mm. out their qualities, and I think... The, the qualities that Liverpool have in the team, the way they count the press, the way they play at pace, I think it suits him much better than it does at Arsenal. I don't think it's so much of a de development thing. Mm. I think it's just about a player having the right fit of a team. It's all, it's all sorts of courses. Yeah. I mean, Salah, you know, people go, oh, Salah, well, can't, can't believe Chelsea let him go. It didn't, it didn't fit Chelsea. It's like Lukaku didn't yeah, fit yeah. Chelsea. You know, team, players fit certain players. And he probably fits Liverpool. They're quite open, you know, they counter-attack, they're quick, he's got got plenty of pace up mm. front, mm. which if you're playing in a midfield three and you've got them three up front who are as lively as anything, mm. it's nice. Yeah. You know, at Arsenal, he didn't really play with a lot of pace in front of him. You know, Giroud usually played up mm -hmm. front on yeah. his own. And, mm. you know, and it, it's hard when you get into positions where you, you get into that little number 10 position, you, you, you're crying out for someone where you can, you can just go bang and they're away and it makes you look good. Mm. Mm. But when you've got no pace, and, and I think that's helping him at the moment because they're sort of giving him the ball. Because yeah. when you look, he's the one who makes things happen. I, you know, Henderson, for me, is not, not going to put the ball through the eye of a needle. He'll knock it 60 yards cross field and, and they'll be away. But I just think he's getting more of the ball. And, you know, it's not rocket science. It's, mm. you know, he needs to play football and that's what he's doing. You know, I wouldn't be too disrespectful to Arsene Wenger in that situation yeah. of... You know, oh, you know, he's playing here now, and he's becoming. But I mean, a is there a player. fair critique there of Arsene Wenger about his development of players? Because yeah, let's be honest, I, mean, I, I, look, bet you, I, I bet you can name three or four that have gone into there and not perhaps got to where you. Think yeah, I mean, I, I could sit here and say, oh, that's Arsene Wenger, but I, I could be wrong. That could be the players. Mm. You know, you know, that could be the players get comfortable, and it's a comfortable football club. Mm. And you know, and then you're blaming the. That's manager. a word that's used a lot about Arsenal, isn't it? Comfort. It's comfortable. comfortable. It yeah. is comfortable, and you know, players are there, and they're thinking, yeah, it's nice. Mm. You know, fair play to fair play to him. You know, he wanted to go. You know, he could have gone to Chelsea, and mm. he looked at that, and he thought, no, I'm going to be playing yeah. wing back at Chelsea. Exactly. I don't want to play wing back. Yeah, I think that's I want exactly to play in midfield, and and hopefully he'll stay in midfield. Yeah. And after tomorrow, mm. he'll start playing well. Yeah. And I'm looking at developing players, Lee, from a manager's point of view. You get the sense, obviously. Said to Paul there about the perception perhaps of Arsene Wenger, but there seems to be a real delight in Jurgen Klopp and bringing players on. You, and it feels like with Oxlade Chamberlain, he always talks about the team ethos, but he's quite happy to, to shine a little light on perhaps what he thinks he's bringing out of him as opposed to what he's experienced in the past. Yeah, I think so. And I think like, different managers bring out different things in different players and different styles. I think the big thing for me is that the attitude in which the team plays are they a recycling team, are they a possession team, are mm -hmm. they a counter attacking team? Can midfielders get in the box? Mm. Do they want to sit and just keep recycling it and feed a, a star player? Or do they want to make dangerous positions and get mm. goals? And um, I think that's the key. Like each, each manager will develop each player in a different way. Some will develop them better mentally, some will improve technically. I remember Brendan Rodgers, for example, watching a session that, uh, that he done with, Stur with Sturridge. 1v1, just on heading technique. Mm. And then uh, on the Saturday, I think Sturridge scored two headers. So, <laughs> um, again, it all boils down to the environment, the culture, 
whether the player actually has got the confidence in the coach as mm -hmm. well, because that's really important. If the player feels that the coach loves him, he'll do anything to, mm -hmm. and do anything yeah. for him. And I think uh, sometimes you just can't please everyone as a coach. Mm -hmm. you, you have to prioritise uh, the key players. Yes, you've got young players coming up in behind that and you try and develop them, but at the end of the day, we know this game is about results. And, Absolutely. Uh, we have to get them quickly. And for you, Leo, we, you can't, we can't mention Liverpool without mentioning the Fab Four, can we? Oh. Brighton came up against them. Yeah, I had a great experience the other week. watching them. It wasn't and so great a result. Well, what, what, was, what was it like? From, from Brighton's point of view, what do you do to, first and foremost, try and stop them? And then, if it starts to go wrong in the game, how do we react to that? Well, we worked all week on trying to stop and counter-attack us because of the pace and the, and the transition that they've got with mm. that front four. Um, it didn't work too well on the day because we lost 5-1, but that's the key with them because... I remember Glenn Murray had a shot from two yards out, Mignolet saves it, and 12 seconds later, mm. the ball's in the back of our net. So what you have to do is make sure you're organised when you're in possession. And, and speaking about the game between Arsenal and Liverpool on, uh, tomorrow night, Arsenal love to play up from the back and be expansive, but they have to be aware mm -hmm. that if they lose the ball in, in certain situations, within three passes, the ball could be in the back of their net. So they've got a big job on their hands being organised in possession, and that's going to be a key to the game tomorrow. Mm -hmm.